Our student guest tonight is an offensive lineman on the football team. He's president of the illustrious Cap and Gown Club and chair of the Inter Club Council, which is made up of all the presidents of all the eating clubs. Uh, we're going to give him our lunch money and beg him to give us an atomic wedgie just so we know what it's like to be touched by a cool person. Uh, <laughs> please welcome to the show, Alec Egan. <laughs> Lifted me off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alec, what really is the ICC? Um, let's see. We're all eleven presidents of all eleven clubs, and we get together and uh, talk about what we do. <laughs> so you do okay. Uh, so then, what do you do as the chair of the ICC? Um, So do you guys have any, like, is it sort of a forum just to discuss, like, problems that come up and see if you can learn from each other, or? Um, mostly it's just 11, uh, mostly dudes, uh, <laughs> swapping stories about what happened on Saturday night. <laughs> this, this does not sound like a legitimate body. This just sounds like, sounds like a lot of, I mean, it sounds fun. <laughs> it is fun, but, uh, you know, we do have, uh, I guess we do have a lot of power, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think we were asking you about? Um, <laughs> so what, what sort of powers do you guys have? Um, well, we can, uh, we can make new things, I guess. Like, uh, <laughs> um, like, like new buildings, <laughs> new clubs, <laughs> superpowers? Uh, like, like new, Just new ways to uh, select people. Uh, okay, so like yeah. the new multi-club bicker system. Yes, kind of. <laughs> so, um, so you guys had some some say in sort of bringing that, bringing that forward. Um, yeah, I, I'd say so. The uh, it's been like in the works for a long time, and uh, some of the grad board chairs gave us some pushes in the back. But uh, for the most part, like everybody, everybody on the ICC this year really wanted to really wanted to reform some of how selection process happens. So, okay, so cool. We did. So, what are some of the the benefits that you see from this new system that's going on? Um. One, I think it. The, one of the first things that all the clubs decided to do was to <coughs> synchronize the uh, synchronize the information about how right. it's going out. Right. So we're going to have one big website that uh, that pretty much is a one stop shop for all things eating clubs. And then after that, at the end of the week, we're all going to let everybody know at the same time. Uh, so there's not kind of a disparity between like who's finding out on Friday, who's finding out on Saturday, and who finds out whenever. You know. So it's like. Okay. So that's like one big thing. But then the other big thing is that uh, we wanted to make the process to where sophomores didn't have to decide at the beginning of their freshman year whether or not they wanted to bicker a certain club and then throw all of their eggs into that basket. And so, you know, the four clubs that decided, uh, the four bicker clubs and then, uh, and then uh, Charter, who is not a bicker club, Rodrigo. Um, <laughs> is, that, is that an issue of contention? Oh, <laughs> big issue of contention. <laughs> Everything we say in all the emails always has to say uh, always has to say multi club selection because of oh, okay. Rodrigo and Charter. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. It's fine. Uh, I, think, I think Rodrigo's grown used to the grown used to correcting people. But uh, but yeah, it's just it's just about it's just about making the sophomores uh, making the sophomores not have to you know lock into a club from day one and then uh, hopefully that they can realize that. The street is the street, and we're all eating clubs at the end of the day. And though uh, though we have our fun rivalries, we uh, we like to uh, we all like each other, and we want people to come out to the eating clubs and join one. That's awesome. That's awesome. So um, now, are there things are there things that sort of going forward? Is this do you see this as kind of a final step in this reform process, or are there things that you'd like to see happen further down the road? Definitely not. When we when we wrote the proposal, we wrote a line in there that says we want to look at this next year and the year after and the year after. We want to just keep working with it to make it as efficient and, and as successful as possible. Because we know that like this first attempt is really just a, it's just a baby step in what we hope could really transform the street. So. All right. Now I want to kind of switch gears a bit and talk about just sort of your specific time uh, being president of Cap and Gap. Fair enough. Um, is it, it seems like a really miserable experience. Uh, as, you know, as fun as it is, it seems like 
I've seen people vomit and eating clubs, and I know somebody has to clean that up. <laughs> um, yes, someone has to clean it up, and that someone is uh, that someone is one of the officers of the eating clubs has to clean it up every night. Oh no. Okay. Um, all of my all of my good stories involve two inches of vomit on the floor, me with a mop, and uh, yelling at people to get the fuck out. Those are your good stories. Those are bad stories. Uh, winter formals. Uh, oh, so like four feet of vomit, <laughs> and just two mops, and a child like screaming in your arms. Uh, so are those? I, I was gonna ask what sort of the funniest or most horrifying thing that you've seen at an eating club is. That seems to cover both. Um, I had an alumni go into my room over homecoming and vomit on my bed. <laughs> the question is, was it intentional? Was he like, I... He came back from Sacramento, specifically to vomit. You good? Two facts, two facts. No, I mean, there's, there's all... You know, yes, we have a lot of like power to like do things, but at the same time, uh, it's all fun and games until you're up at 2 a.m. Uh, picking up cups and cleaning up vomit and uh, dealing with the police because somebody asshole pulled the fire alarm. If that was one of you, um, <laughs> just FYI, the Boston Blazers was completely ruined. Rough night for Captain Young. Good job, audience. <laughs> Also, you're just like, uh, you're an interesting guy. You were in this play with us, uh, but you're also in the football team. Just like, uh, now looking back, you're a senior now. (laughs) Nobody does these things together. Um, see, I, uh, I stepped off the, uh, plane, train, and automobile from Abilene, Texas, uh, four years ago and said, let's just go head first. And, uh, I did. And, uh. I don't have the best grades, um, <laughs> but, um, but I, I've had a I've had a lot of fun. So I think that's what counts. Uh, that I mean that's really awesome. Uh, so now actually we're really excited tonight because uh, we not only have Alec, uh, we have nine of the eleven eating club presidents uh, joining us tonight. So let's bring them all out. <laughs> So the way we're going to do that is by playing a little game called Over the Line. (laughs) Now, for all you presidents, here's how this is going to work. I'm going to read off something that applies to at least one of the clubs on the street. And if you think that it applies to your club, I want you to walk over the line. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to do is create a line. So all of you... (laughs) Crazy, right? So I'm going to want all of you to just go to that side of the stage, if you would. Thank you. And now just make a line in your minds. <laughs> Here at the center of the stage. You can all have two! Peter Patrick. It's amazing, really. Okay, so now we're just gonna read off some things. If you think they apply to you, come on over. And then I'll tell you if they do. So the first thing. In 1992, this club went members only for a week straight after five consecutive weekends of vandalism. Yeah, let's <laughs> Correct! <laughs> <laughs> Good guess, but it turns out it was actually Kaddish. Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright, next up. In 1980, we're going even further back, guys. Initiates from TI, this is actually not your fault though. <laughs> it was someone in your club, but not you. Uh, you have been around for quite a while. Initiates from TI flooded these three clubs, destroying windows and knocking down an elderly club steward. <laughs> Okay. 
One more. Oh, um, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie! Jamie, you have the illustrious privilege of being the first person to be right about one of these as a matter of fact. <laughs> Carol was one of the three clubs, the other two were Ivy and Cottage. <laughs> All right. This third club was described by F. Scott Fitzgerald in This Side of Paradise as anti-alcoholic, faintly religious, and politically powerful. <laughs> ben, did you just did you just bat quad on the He's <laughs> faintly religious. Any guesses? Katie. Okay. I don't think it was us, but I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Your guess was correct. <laughs> uh, it was actually Cap. Cap. Oh, <laughs> got the power. All right. <laughs> Next up, this is a club that F. Scott simply called Eight Flamboyant. Dollars. <laughs> uh, you're, you're sullying your perfect record, my dear. I'm sorry, but that was actually colonial. Let's <laughs> embrace this aspect of your club again. Alright, third up. I think these are all just F. Scott quotes at this point. We need to know point. what he has to say. So this one is an impressive melange of brilliant adventurers and well-dressed philanderers. We can have multiple guesses. Yeah. <laughs> Campus. 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 Okay, it was actually Cottage. Oh. <laughs> Cottage has had so many of these, and they are not here. Okay, let's, let's see how well you guys can guess this one. So, uh, detached and breathlessly aristocratic. You all get one correct. And this one's simply literary. This one's us. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Okay, so the game with the imaginary line to not go as well as planned. <laughs> Nevertheless, we'll move right along to the second one. Okay. 